can I grab something real quick? Yeah. Great. Okay. Hold on. So this is my most expensive piece of art I've ever made and sold. And it continues to make money. My business went from 100, 150K to like 800K in what felt like a second. That's life changing. I think the NFTs is gonna change the entire landscape of art. My name is Blake Jamison. I am pop portrait artist for professional athletes here in Brooklyn, New York. I grew up in a very creative household. My dad is an art collector and was a photographer for a long time. My mom makes mosaics, my grandma paints. So I studied economics at Davis and got into digital marketing after college, which was cool because it allowed me to do something artistic a little bit. It was graphic design, video editing, copywriting uh, for clients. When I turned 30, it essentially is like when I just decided that I wanted to do something else. It wasn't like an aha moment that I was like, I can't do this anymore. It was like a gradual, like I just got run down. Even though I was doing creative stuff every day, I was like doing it still within this box and like having to punch in and punch out essentially. When I left the job, I took a five week trip to Barcelona. I had never been to Europe before. I didn't have any plan. I had a backpack. I had a one night booked in a hostel and like literally nothing else for five weeks. And so there were walking tours of Gaudi architecture and there was one of street art and graffiti in Barcelona. They were like the graffiti capital of the world in the 80s and would draw artists from all over the world would come there and paint. She basically like told us on the walking tour, like, you know, they make it with stencils and they do this. And like, you can see this technique, like she was like kind of technical. And so I was just like inspired. And so then when the trip ended and I came back to the US, like, I guess that's really like when I decided that's how I'm gonna fill my time. Well, I'm excited for you, honey. I can feel your passion. And when you get into something, you really get into it. So I think you'll make it work for you because that's what you do. That's the plan. I'm 30 years old at this point, and my parents are just so cool. And I set up a studio in our family property, essentially. It's like very rural, it's two acres, Marin County, just north of San Francisco. And there's this barn in the back of the property, and I used one of the barn stalls that my grandma used to have as her art studio in there. Naturally, I like documented everything that I did, took pictures of everything, posted it online. Slowly, people started saying, hey, how much is that piece? Oh, I wanna buy this piece, I'm interested. For like, I think at least six months, I would not sell a painting because I didn't feel comfortable with the, my ability with the paintbrush, essentially, or a spray can. But I am a businessman and like I wanted to sell paintings and so I made a list of all these people that had reached out and wanted a painting. And so then, I think it was the very end of 2016, I made a Facebook post and it was kind of like a recap of the year post. And it's like, look at all the things I painted this year. I'm also ready to sell my first piece. In fact, I'm gonna sell 10 pieces. And the way that it works is I have 10 16 by 20 canvases and I will paint anything you want on it for 500 bucks, but it has to be a stencil that I've already cut. And those 500 bucks each times 10 sold out in like a couple hours. So I made like $5,000 the first day I ever sold art. I remember when that happened, I'm like, mm, this is, I think I could do this. I knew that it was important to have like a specific thing that I was gonna do. That was like part of me working with all these businesses as content marketers is like, yeah, but who are you serving and what problem are you solving? So I wanted to apply that to my business. And so I'm like, okay, well, I just looked at the list of everyone that bought my paintings and was like, looked at what they do and who they are and like, Almost all of them were in like tech startup and that makes sense because that's like my contacts. And so that like kind of triggered to be like, you know what, maybe I'm the guy that makes super dope art for offices and I can leverage all my existing contacts. I did this awesome like Steve Jobs portrait for Hintwater in San Francisco. And I'm also thinking at the same time like, okay, how do I market myself differently than other artists? Everyone else is on Instagram, I'm gonna use LinkedIn. If like fate hadn't brought me to the sports angle, I would still be doing that and probably doing okay with it. But fate brought me to Las Vegas delivering art to a different person. And then during that trip, I met a guy who played in the NFL, Jared Faison, changed my life. He really liked my art and he's like, hey man, the office stuff's cool, but let me get you into football. I've got a few clients that I think would be a great fit for you that they would appreciate your art. If you do these three for free, I'm gonna have all of them promote it and post it. I think when I got back from that Vegas trip, I'm pretty sure I updated my LinkedIn like that day from like 
I make art for offices to I make art for athletes. So like literally in the locker rooms, I would get like DMs from somebody that took a picture of my painting in like their teammate's locker and they're like, how do I get one of these? And it was like clockwork. Ultimately like Topps baseball cards saw one of the paintings that I had done for free and then set up a call and like invited me to be part of what was Topps Project 2020, which went totally nuts last year and changed my life. Topps selected 20 artists all across the board. There were painters like me, digital artists, and then each of us recreated 20 different iconic baseball cards. They released them online. They sold them for 48 hours, only on tops.com. It's the only place you could get it. It cost $20 per card. It was like a madhouse. During the Tops project, a friend of mine, Matt Costello, and myself started a podcast. One of our early guests was an artist named Micah Johnson, who used to play in Major League Baseball. Now he's an artist, a fine artist. He essentially explained NFTs, but like didn't call it that. I got really lucky of getting in early, but I also just didn't understand it. So like I posted a couple things, but nobody bid on it, nobody saw it. And I didn't really promote it because I'm like, I don't understand this thing. Why would I send people to look at this when I could send people to my tops project that's like, this is my dream, right? When that changed, I look at like, what's I think gonna like move the needle the most for me this year and NFTs is ahead of tops. That just happened in the last six weeks. Somebody bid and it wasn't a lot. It was like 0.1 Ethereum. But at the time that was still like 100 bucks, 150 bucks that I'm like, wait, they're gonna give me 150 bucks for that. One of the biggest issues is like, people don't understand what they can't touch and they can't feel. If that's the problem, how do I solve that problem? Well, one way is by sending them something physical to go with the NFTs. So I started experimenting with that, just doing like a print on metal. Even have one most recently that I sold that comes with literally like the original painting of LeBron James that I did, which is actually the most expensive NFT I ever sold was coming with the physical painting, which to me makes sense. Can I grab something real quick? Yeah. Great, okay, hold on. So this is my most expensive piece of art I've ever made and sold. And it continues to make money. So when I was looking around at like things that I should sell for NFTs, I was always seeing like some weird, like kind of trippy, funky stuff. And like, I just like looked over at this and saw like some of these parts and I'm like, this could be kind of a cool piece. And so I basically just, you know, put it down on the ground and took and used like my nice camera and took high res images all the way across of, of each section. I sold a picture of the chunk for like $1,000. And then I sold the next chunk and it was like 1200. And then I sold the next chunk and it was like 1500. It's been a couple months and I've made 40, 45,000 on Super Rare and maybe 5,000 on OpenSea. And really most of that has been in the last like four to six weeks. This is gonna sound like cocky and arrogant and like I, I don't actually care about money. Like I have love over money on my wrist just as like a pretext for this, but like, I firmly believe that I will be a millionaire in like eight weeks. It's interesting to go from like, not know how to pay rent, rent's totally paid for, I feel like I'm living the dream, to like, wow, that actually was like part of what's possible, which is cool. Weird. This is my most expensive piece of art I've ever made. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but pretty dope.